Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, check it out using my discount code ANTHONY to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee uh, here with you again with another episode of the Plant Free MD podcast. Uh, today, I have a very special guest, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Mason, who's over in the UK. Uh, Michael, how are you? Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Great. So you, you have you have quite a big online presence. You've been on on several different uh, podcasts talking about you know your diet and um, uh, you know just eating mostly meat, uh, predominantly meat, and and you just have like brutal uh, you know home home workouts uh, that you do, and uh, and you've been in very inspirational to a lot of people. Um, but for people that haven't come across you, can you just give us a, a bit of a uh, introduction to yourself and on who you are and what you do? Sure. Um... I'm Michael Mason. I live in the UK. Uh, I'm 58. I'm predominantly uh, what you would call a, a, a trainer, but I train and coach in martial arts. Uh, I'm a ski coach and strength and conditioning. Um, and currently I'm running um, carnival retreats in the Scottish Highlands. Next week is the second one. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I've worked as a bodyguard. Um, Body being a bodyguard for you know a fair proportion of my, of my life, specifically in in Switzerland, um, and I've always been you know involved in just trying to be a better human being. Simple as that. Yeah, very good. So uh, that's kind of cool. So so these carnivore these retreats that you've been doing. So this is the second one. How and it's Scottish Highlands. If no one's ever been there, go. I got like I've I've been into a lot of places in the world. I think Scottish Highlands are still one of my favorite areas. It's just absolutely stunning landscape. And you just you're just driving for hundreds and hundreds of miles on a single road and there's no turnoffs the entire time. It's just just gorgeous countryside around you the entire time. So I think that would be absolutely amazing. Where was that was that just like deep in the middle of the of the highlands, which is like nothing around you, or is it in a town or anything like that? It's pretty much one of the remotest glens in in Scotland. It's in a glen called Glen Canic, yeah. and it's it's literally in in the middle of the you know the, the upper part between Inverness and the west coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and is I mean it's just magical. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I've lived in beautiful places. I've li- lived in the mountains in in, in Switzerland that are just course like any any mountain area is stunning but it's just it's just it's just beautiful there um yeah. and um on a, a hunting estate um and it's it that we'll be staying is, is, a, is the former lodge for that and it's just it's like going back a hundred it's like going back a hundred years and you know being the, the last Tsar of russia actually was at that lodge yeah. um before he went back to to russia and then got they got, that, got the axe. There, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you do wish he did stay there. Uh, well, that sounds amazing. So how long did that go for? How did that uh, how did that go? So it's it's a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I do everything. So I, I take everyone through the breath work, all the breath work, the different types of breath work that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, eating. So we'll eat twice a day. It's pretty much a reflection on you know on, on what I do. So we'll um, Breath work, eating, we do some strength type training, um, and then we go hiking and walking. And as you know, like Scotland is raining, but it's beautiful. Um, so we do everything outside. We do the you know the breath work inside. It's overlooking the massive lock in front, and uh, yeah. So I do the breathing, the training, the cooking, and and the eating. Yeah, and a little bit of the talking. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. And uh, well, it sounds like it went well enough that you're doing doing a second one. Is that something you're going to try to do um, 
ongoing? That uh, how often would you hope to do these? So this is this is the the the, the second one. Um, I'm planning to do another one um, January February because I love to do it when there's there's snow on the hills because it would mm. just be um, magical. But it is it's not the easiest of places to get to. Um, but then you know people will, if they want to do it they will they will they will they will they will find a way. And last year when I did the first one, we were just coming out of lockdown. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. You know, it was, I had people who had on the course who got COVID. I wasn't sure if it was just going to, and I just had to make sure I'm just going to do it. And the last week uh, before it was going on, um, we had this, this petrol fiasco in the UK where you couldn't get any petrol or any yes. diesel. So a week before, and there's, there was no contingency for that because I'm, I, I take a, a all the I take up all the food, all the training equipment, and uh, so and this this time it's 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 easy and yeah so the plan is to do um, six if I can here and then work out yeah. a place where I can do one in the summer. Oh, very good. Yeah, and and it's great that like you know, more of these things are coming around. Is that is that pretty much carnivore based? You just just doing meat, and this is for people that are looking for that. Are you? Um, mix it up because I, I I know that you basically mostly eat meat, but I know you use like you know different seasonings and and things like that as well. So yeah, so I mean I, I mean I'll I'll use some I'll use seasonings, mm. I'll use some veg if I'm making a stock or I'm making a stew, you know simply for, you know for, you know for, you know for the for the flavor profile, and I'll make some call it keto esque you know desserts and some ice creams. I don't use any almond flour, but I'll, I'll use some xylitol as a, as a sugar. Mm. And I think just for a way for people to come in um, to experience, you know, a lower carbohydrate diet where they can still experience like good flavor and think, oh, you know, I can do that. Oh, I can eat steak and eggs. I don't need the bread. I don't need, you know, I don't need the, the, the hash browns. I don't need this. So to make it as flavorful um, as possible and also you know and, uh, and as you know that like one thing we miss on carnival or, or let's say perhaps not so much keto is texture mm. you know it's that you know that bit of you know that bit of crunch because that is um, something that happens in the mouth that creates all these other things that are going on and just getting something to be delicious and satisfying that people say yeah I can do this I can do this not just for a week or a month I could do this for the rest of my life because we can all do things, we can all do something really, really strict for a week, a month, three months. And there's lots of people who are doing really, really well, being completely strict for, for years, but there's not that many of them. And most people falter um, because they can't keep to that sort of strict. And I like to eat, I've always like to eat, I like to eat nice, tasty things. And that for me is, is, is you know, it's important, it's a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah. And I, you know, I do try to tell people like, you know, cause I, I, I'm, I've always been happy just eating meat and like, that was the only thing I wanted to eat anyway. And so I was, I was, yeah. as soon as I, I had, I had an excuse to not eat vegetables, I'm like, right, I'm out. And so yeah. I was, but you know, but I, you know, I try to talk to people because you, you're right. You know, you need to do something that's sustainable for you. This is eminently sustainable for me. Like I, I want nothing else. And so it's uh, that's easy for me, but it's not for everybody. And uh, it's not easy for everyone, I should say. And, and so, you know, you have to sort of meet people where they are. And if, if people are just really bucking that, you know, I, I try to tell people that, you know, you don't have to, you know, throw away the good for the perfect, you know, and I, I like doing this because first of all, I enjoy it. But second of all, because I, I feel the best, you know, I, I, I just feel better when I do things like this. And so for me, that works. But for other people, you know, they may not be able to stick to it at all to any degree if they're as, as strict as I am. And, and it's much better to, you know, to get rid of most of the stuff that's bad for you and, and do something that you can, you can continue and you can perpetuate rather than just not doing any, anything at all. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and there's, let's call it the market. A lot of people who are not that they have any bad health um, and they eat, let's say, a relatively good 
let's call it a Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. You know, they eat a relatively good diet. So they, you know, fresh vegetables, lots of fruit, blah, blah, blah. And they're becoming, you know, I'm going to become more plant-based. We're cutting down, we're cutting down the meat and because we want to, you know, save the world and the environment in, in all this type of stuff. And, you know, and, and I've got friends like that and, and they, they see what I'm doing and they're starting to think, hmm, maybe he is, he is doing something right. And, and so it's trying to get those type of people. Well, instead of adding more vegetables, what about adding more meat? And so you're just bringing it down. And, and then you can see maybe after a month or two months, you'll, you'll start judging, like, how do you feel? And if you've got any medical type issues, let's see if they go away. You know, if you're sleeping, if you've got, you know, skin issues, all these type of things. And it's, it's that to me is, is like another big part of, um, the, you, know, you know, the focus. Not everyone is coming um, and doing this because they're really, really ill or they're obese, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it, it's, I'm trying to have a, let's say an open, more than open door type of policy. If, that, if, that's, if, that's, if that's the word and just say, look, get, stop doing this, this plant-based, you know, um, crap and blah, blah, start eating a bit more meat. And then I'll try and give them sort of the information about regenerative farming, all these types of good practices. Um, and so they can say, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. And so how, how did you come, come to this uh, to begin with? What was your, how long have you been sort of, you know, meat-based and then and, and what, what, what brought you around? So, I've always been, you know, I've always been, you know, you know, meat based. Mm. But to, to, you know, to answer like the, you know, the, the question, it's always been, you know, everything um, it's been about evolving, understanding, researching. Um, and what I said before about, you know, trying to be, you know, a, you know, a better sort of like human being, you know, from, you know, from the age of my early twenties, you know, my focus was like, you know, how can I be a better performing person not just physically but mentally and, and let, let, let's call it let's call it you know you know spiritually so i so i experimented with stuff i experimented with being a vegetarian even though when i was growing up i hated veg you know i hated vegetables <laughs> i never i never believed the, the popeye crap yeah. <laughs> i never i always wanted to be i always wanted to be bluto you know and, and, you know, and, and, you know and, and desperate dan in the comics with the you know with the cow pies with the horns coming out <laughs> it was just like you know that was the stuff and and i just never got it with 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 you know one pop i smoked you know you, you know it, it, it was so it was so anyway um back to the you know the other like question so i started experimenting i started experimenting with you know vegetarianism because i was doing things like protein not not combining protein with carbs and you know and it just sort of you know, ev you know evolved and being in your 20s you can do an awful lot. You can smash your body. The body recovers, and you don't really feel, you know, you know, you know, feel, you know, feel that bad. And and then it just went back to the smell of bacon sandwiches got me back on, back on, back on track because you know that that maybe maybe we should just do like put the smell of bacon in, you know, in the world and get people <laughs> just following. Oh, I like, you know. Um, and so it just just sort of like you know evolved from. From that, and then in the late, I suppose, in the nineties, we had like the Atkins diet, and that to me was sort of like it was like this. This is this is like a not a, this is a good thing because they're saying that cut out bread, cut out you know, cut out like the heavy you know the starches etc. And you know you know eating you know eating bacon and eggs, um, and 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 an interesting you know you know story. You know, with that, you know, back then, you know, my mother, both my parents are elderly. They're very, very ill with dementia, mm -hmm. et cetera. But back then, you know, my mother had um, sugar issues, diabetes, you know, always up and down, you know, blood sugar. She was fainting. She'd always carry these, um, these, these glucose tablets. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, this was, this was like a long time ago, I said to her, I said, look, mum, just do one, you know, one thing, just change your breakfast. Instead of eating a bread and, and oat, oatmeal, et cetera, 
just eat bacon and eggs, smoke salmon and eggs, but cut out that. So she started, she started doing that. And immediately the blood sugar just, there was no issue. She wasn't fainting. She felt better. She went to, to have a checkup with the diabetic nurse. And you know you have to remember this that my parents were brought up in the time, and I know you're a doctor. That the doc, a doctor, anyone in the medical profession was like the highest of the whatever the doctor said they believed, and they 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 would do. Mm. She went to see the diabetic nurse, and she, the diabetic says, "Mrs. Mason, you're doing fantastic. You've dropped some weight. Your blood sugar is is great." And they said, "What have you been doing?" She says, "Oh, my son." has put me on this special diet and it wasn't a special diet it was just like you just eat bacon and eggs <laughs> and her first words to her was oh i wouldn't do that and there was the evidence mm -hmm. my mother came back and she was like really really confused and and it it, it sort of like made it, it this sort of makes me sort of like 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 sad um because you know someone has given information that's that's pretty much help to continue doing someone's life and she said to me oh but i won't mention her name because she's still i think she's still there um mm -hmm. she told me not to do what you're doing and she knows what she's doing because she's diabetic herself and i said to her and i didn't and i've got no issue with people being overweight fat or this is not i said was she and i just said to her i said was she fat and she said yeah she said she's huge <laughs> and I just said, and, and it was, it was, yeah. you know, you've got someone like that um, telling someone yeah. with the evidence that's been presented, don't do that. And unfortunately, my mother sort of from then, you know, believed that, mm -hmm. it believed in medication and all, you know, in all of that. So my journey from, um, has always been about sort of experimentation, evolving it, and you know, and judging how I feel. And yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, I mean, more, more, a... more meat. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, more meat, more meat, less crap, less yeah. bread. Even if even if it's fantastic, amazing sourdough that's been blessed but on grains by the Dalai Lama, still makes me feel crap and I, and I and i hate the fact that it does because I, I i would love to eat toasted sourdough with butter every day for the rest of my life but <laughs> i feel i feel shit so yeah that was true and and um yeah but that, that's the thing you know you, I mean, you see the evidence right in front of you and you're living the experience of it and then you go back to the other thing and you don't get the same results i mean it's just like how can you how can you, first of all, as a, as a diabetic nurse, that's, that's really irresponsible for them to do that. Um, and, and sometimes it, it just can be people trying to, uh, you know, justify their own bad actions. And if they're, if they're doing, if they, if they can convince other people to do it, then what they're doing is okay. It's not abnormal, but you know, the physicist Richard Feynman said, and I, I, I quote this guy a lot, but it's very true. And it is so applicable is that it doesn't matter how brilliant your theory is. And it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. And so that diabetic nurse said, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. And, you know, and, and then she all of a sudden started getting bad results. She said, don't do this. That's giving you good results because you'll get bad results. Well, it's right in front of your face. Like you're not getting bad results. Yeah. You're getting back getting good results. Yeah. And so that's the only yeah. thing that really matters. And you would, you would hope that somebody working in diabetic care would know that there's over a hundred years of data research and publications in the medical literature showing that the best way to control blood sugar is a ketogenic diet, hands down, you know, and, and we've, and we've, we've been using that since the 1800s, you know, and, and yet now just no one has any idea how to, how to do it. And I, and I hear, you know, endocrinologists and, and, and diabetic specialists, you know, contemplating all this, this ratio of carbs, this, that, just stop eating them, just stop. You don't have to worry about the ratio of this to that and ratio of calories to, you know, carbs and just, just stop eating carbs. It's, it's simple biochemistry, you know, yeah. and, um, and you won't, you won't have this, this issue. And uh, it's very frustrating to me being in the medical community that, that people in the medical community don't even know their own, their own literature in their own field. It's very frustrating. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, and because 
they were so they were more worried about fat or particularly saturated fat. They were more worried about that than 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 they oh, but you'll get you know you'll get heart attacks and blah blah. You know, it's just it's just it's just give someone some fear, pass on yeah. some fear, make them frightened, and then they will do um, what you want. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, is just, you need to watch out for heart disease. You don't eat that fat because you get heart disease. I was like, okay, so just keep the diabetes, make that worse, but watch out for, for heart disease. Well, here's the thing. The number one risk factor for heart disease is being diabetic. So if you were really worried about heart disease, you would try to get the person to not be diabetic. And if you're doing this, you know, uh, if you're doing a ketogenic diet and you're eating a lot of fatty meat and that's helping you not be diabetic anymore, and that's the number one risk factor for getting heart disease. Wouldn't you think that maybe there's a connection there? That maybe the things that are causing diabetes are also maybe you know uh, making more likely to get heart disease, and maybe the thing that's curing your diabetes directly might actually help with heart disease as well. I don't know. You know, I'm just a doctor. What do I know? But uh, yeah. I, I mean, that, I mean, you don't need to be a doctor to to just be able to look and and think logically with these sorts of things yeah and which is which is you know what you're doing yeah yeah um so so how how long ago was how how long ago was that and uh, and that you've been just basically just eating meat and you've you sort of cut out the sourdough and everything i mean that that was it that was in the that was in the not that was in the 90s oh wow Oh well, you that, that, you know that you know that you know that was, and you know I'm not academic. I you know and well, probably you know, back then probably even, was good. even before there was no there was no internet, there was no Google, mm. um, where you had to go to a library to to. So I was be when I was going through my phase of being vegetarian and understanding about being vegan, um, I had to go into libraries and get to get books to try and. Now there's so and, and and going back to your you, what you were saying, there's so much information you know around people can just search on on stuff and like you know get it. Back then you couldn't. So 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 yeah. So, yeah so it was that was back in the you know you know back in the nineties and you know and I didn't understand things on the scientific level. I didn't understand you know it, you know being in you know training going to gyms. And people will be on bodybuilding diets and this type of diet and you know how to reduce fat, how to get muscle, and 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 all of it was just like so you try different stuff. You know, you try, okay, eat seven meals a day. I mean, it's like I don't know how people do that. You know, I mean, these the, the I, I I don't know how. I mean, okay, the eating part of it, I you okay, you could I could get, if someone was to prepare it for me, then okay. But now you have the companies that actually do that, so you don't have to do the work of actually cooking for yourself, you know. Because I, you know, I can do that six times, but I, I did it. It didn't last very long. But you're made to think that's the only way. Yeah, you, if you want to put on muscle, if you want to be strong, you've got to eat six times a day, and and then have snacks in between, so your blood sugar doesn't go. You know, you know, go. You know, be like a cow, graze. It's like, but I'm not a cow. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not an effing cow. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. So it's for me. It was just you know exploring, exploring different stuff, and and as soon as you start making it really, really simple, of which being carnivore, even I wouldn't say I wouldn't say being keto is is is, is simple because you have to weigh things up and, and you know you have to mm. work out your macros and it's like you know that's too much you know much you know much you know, much for me. Don't eat crap. Yeah, you know, cut out the carbs. Yeah, get some good meat and 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 eat it. And mm. you'll feel. I feel great. Yeah, you know, I don't know about any you know, any, you know anyone else. I'm strong. I can do stuff. Um, active. So that yeah. to me is my own anecdotal you know, evidence. Well, you know, and the thing is, you know, some people scoff at anecdotal evidence, but like this is your life. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and so it's just that, you know, you have these good results and you have all these sorts of things and, and, and people can and scoff that off. And it's just like, okay, well, I guess it just didn't happen then. I guess this person's, you know, didn't recover from, you know, uh, diabetes and heart disease. And he, I guess he's not, you know, jacked and, you know, lifting, putting up big weights and things like that. I guess that's just not, not happening then because it's anecdotal, you know, and, and people forget that, 
you know, these, these are data points, but data points are people's lives and their experiences. And, the, and the, those things are, are meaningful. You know, in medicine, we, we have randomized controlled trials, we have meta analyses, and we also have case studies where we have say, hey, look at this, this is interesting, you know, and, and you know, wonder why that is. You have someone who has some, you know, weird, wild form of, of disease. Oh, well, it's, that's just anecdotal. That's just one case. And I was like, yeah, but it's interesting. You know, let's figure out why this happened. Let's figure out why this is an outlier uh, when, when we don't normally see this, you know, and you study that, you look at that and you think about it, you know, what is this guy doing differently that other people aren't? And, you know, and, and it's, it's probably good that you didn't have that medical background because in, in medicine, we just get, we get told what to think. We don't get taught how to think. We get, we get taught what to think. And so unfortunately you get in there because you just get stuffed with books and stuffed with texts. And then even as you're a doctor, you're doing your residency, you just, you got to be reading, 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 reading. And it doesn't matter. And, and there, I swear to God, there are things on like the different boards, like in Australia where people just talk about like, yeah, like half of these things are wrong, but you have to learn it their way because that's how they test it. And so you have to like learn things the wrong way. And some of these, some of the like in the anatomy sort of things, like, like there's, a, a, there's a textbook they use here, which is Last's Anatomy. And it's not that the whole thing's wildly inaccurate, but there, there are some things that just, that don't make sense and that just sort of contradict themselves. And that just, you know, other, other anatomical sources would just disagree and say like, yeah, that's, not, that's really not actually what it is. But you have to learn that version of it because that's the version that they test. And, you know, so they're just, they're, they're te training you to just think how we want you to think as opposed to thinking for yourself. And so I think that's, that's probably the reason why you were able to figure this out 25 years before most other people is because you didn't, you didn't, you weren't taught what to think. You just were able to figure it out for yourself through experiment, which is really the best way to go. I just always, I just always remember. And you know, I used to eat a steak and a steak and a steak, steak for breakfast. And I just always used to feel really, really good. And when I was eating, you know, let's say I'd have some bread with it or I'd have some bread or some, and I didn't feel good. And I couldn't understand, you know, and I couldn't, but the bread, the toast with a bit of marmalade and everything, you know, you get that, you know, you get that, or oh, it makes you feel good that that hedonistic sort of feeling that you that, that, that you that you get i couldn't let go. i couldn't always stop i wanted to hang on to that but eating meat eating like a you know a steak for breakfast you know i used to just feel like you know amazing and i used to have um we used to train a group of us a martial arts we would train on a saturday in the dojo and then after after training they used to come back to mine and i used to make everyone breakfast and it would just be steak and eggs. And, you know, my friends still like, you know, recall that time, you know, 30 years ago. Oh, I can't, you know, remember your breakfast, you know, you know, steak and eggs. And it was just, everyone felt good. You know, it wasn't muffins. It wasn't um, donuts. And, and I still like this idea that, you know, I'd love to eat donuts. You know, I would love to sort of, you know, I'd, if, if I could and, it, it, you know, it, it made me sort of like strong and I felt great and everything was groovy, then I'd be, I'd be eating them. But unfortunately, that's in a parallel universe or something, you know, it's not, it's not in today's reality. Um, but I'd love to. Yeah, well, I, I would too. I mean, I love, I think the first time I, I had like a Krispy Kreme donut, like off the, with the hot light, it just came out. I was just like, oh my God, like, this is the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. You know, just that, just that hot, sweet sort of, you know, bubbly fat. It was just amazing. And I, and I would, I would, you know, and that's the thing it's, it's, it's supposed to be like that. It's addictive. And you just, you crush five boxes of those things. That's the whole point. And uh, that's, the, that's the business model. And um, you know, I mean, I, I, I enjoy drinking. Like I've always enjoyed drinking. I, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, we, we played sports and things like that. We, you know, we went out drinking after rugby games. That's exactly what we did. And um, you know, it's, um, it's a, uh, a shame that it just makes me feel like crap and that I can't perform and, uh, and, and, and excel in the way that I, that I enjoy doing. If I even drink once a week, you know, drinking once a week after games, that was enough to just derail me. Um, but I didn't even know that at the time. It, it wasn't until I stopped drinking. That was, you know, I was an all American. I was playing very high level and drinking 
And then when I stopped, it was just, just took off, you know, my, my athleticism, my performance and my fitness just, just went to just crazy new heights. And then just randomly enough around the same time I went carnivore as well, but they were two separate events. And I just felt many, I would love to drink. I, you know, I would, I would drink all the time. I would absolutely have no problem drinking, you know, heroin, let's do it, you know, like, but there, there are side effects, there are problems, there are ramifications to these things. And, uh, you know, and so, you know, that there's never going to be something you know, where I'm going to want to do like heroin, certainly Jesus Christ, but like, but like, you know, drinking, it, it's very rare. It's very, very, very rare. When I find something, you know, a, a situation where I want to drink more, then I want to feel amazing for the next month because I've noticed that like that when I drink, even when, I mean, I'm not even hung over the next day, but my energy levels just, they're, they're not like I'm bottoming out, but they're not what I'm supposed to, they're not where I'm normally at, you know, and they're, and my, and my exercise tolerance is just not the same. I can't do the same workouts. I don't feel as good working crazy shifts at work. You know, if I was just doing a normal, nine to five and I wasn't working out, uh, the way I, I, you know, do occasionally, I haven't been unfortunately able to get, um, much done in the last couple of months, but normally if I'm able to work out a lot and, and, you know, I, I like to, I like working out for two, three hours, four hours. Sometimes I like that. I enjoy that, but there's no way I can do that even for the next three weeks, four weeks after I drink. And so that's not worth it to me. You know, if I was, if I wasn't living that lifestyle where I had to work a 36 hour shift, 48 hour shift at the hospital and, and be ready to go the whole time and you know, working out for a number of hours, then it, I probably wouldn't even notice much of a difference, you know, but because I've done that and because, you know, you know, playing high level sports, you know, just drinking that one time absolutely made a huge difference for me. It's just, you know, that for me wasn't worth it, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I would love to do that, but I guess it's, you know, I enjoy doing something, but I enjoy, you know, feeling amazing more. Yeah, I mean, for, you know, for me, life is too short for me to feel crap on, you know, you know, on yeah. for even for even for even for one day because mm. it's it's almost the it, it's it's now sort of you know intensified. You know, I will take sometimes I will you know will take it if I'm being <clears throat> invited somewhere, and I know that it's going to be good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a you know I have a very very good friend of mine. He's he's one of the best chefs, one of the best chefs in the UK, one of the best chefs probably in you know in the world. He has a two star Michelin restaurant. Nice. And you know he he invites me up. You know you know every you know sometimes I you know sometimes I go past and you you know and and he'll send me stuff. He'll he does he knows he knows what I do do and he tries to sort of all, almost sort of like do what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not going to pass up that 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 opportunity because one, the food is fantastic, but the interesting thing with that is that one, it's a one-off, and I'm prepared to take that hit if I do feel and I, and honestly I don't. <clears throat> but at that that level of cooking is that everything is so balanced mm. with it's 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 more just about that flavor explosion. And rather than it's not about filling you up, it's not about like have more bread here. Like, oh, it, does it does it come with does it come with mashed potato? You know, mm -hmm. you know it, it's just. And to me, it's that that the whole experience is just far greater than than the nutrition that I'm ha you know getting. It's just it's the whole thing. So mm -hmm. there are certain things I would take a hit, and and some things aren't you know aren't worth it. If I get invited. I used to sort of unblank people if I got invited for dinner because I knew like the food would be sort of crap and I'm not, I'm, you know, I've got other things to do. And I had one friend in, 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 in Switzerland and she was, she was Italian. And I always knew whenever she invited me over, I always knew this was going to be good because she knew what I was doing. It's like, we've got loads of meat. They, they, they used to get scared. Have we got enough meat for you? He's like, you know, we've got plenty of meat for you. I know, I know that I'm going to go there. But yeah, yeah. No, that's nice. I just, I just, I just feel I don't want to spend days feeling crap. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, you, you know, not even like physically, but just, just here. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember when I was studying for my MCATs, going to medical school. 
I had, I had brain fog every single day. And I remember thinking back at the time, that's when I actually switched over because I was just, I was studying for 14 hours a day and like, this is just every day. And so, you know, I didn't, I just wasn't thinking about it. normally I would mostly just eat meat. Um, but at that time I just wanted to make something quick. So I, I, I remember just, there was, there was weeks that I was just mostly just eating, um, like whole wheat pasta. Like that was it because I could just boil it up real quick, just have a bunch of pasta and then just like eat it and then just move on. And, and, and that's what I needed to just, I, I just needed something quick and easy to do. Obviously cooking a steak is easier, but like at that time, that's what, that was in my head. That was yeah. what was, was quick and easy. And I remember just every single day, my head was just in a fog all day. And I remember waking up in the morning, everything was great. And then like a couple hours into my day, I'm just, just droopy and drowsy. And I, my head and my brain just didn't work. And I, I remember thinking, I was like, why doesn't my brain work? I got enough sleep. I shouldn't be tired. Why is this happening? And I thought I just chalked it up to maybe allergies or something like that. But as soon as I stopped eating, you know, certainly grains, but, but even, even the greens, you know, my mental clarity just, just changed like that. And, um, you know, and that's, and that's the thing, like, I, I like my brain working, you know, and, uh, and, it's, and it's certainly something that I, that I need to work in uh, the things that I do, because I, I, I have to read a lot, I have to, you know, go through a lot of, you know, even just when I'm seeing patients, I have to go through a lot of patient data and be able to make, you know, connections between very vague symptoms sometimes and, and figure, figure things out. And uh, if my brain's not working, I'm not going to be good at my job. And, and that's, uh, and if I'm not good at my job, I, you know, we, we don't just miss a deadline, you know, someone's health is affected. And so that's not really, that's not something that I can afford to do. Um, it's not something I'm willing to do. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I just think it's, you know, for, for me, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, but what, what are you eating now? What, what's your, like your day to day at this point? So, I mean, I'll eat twice a day. Um, I, I just, <clears throat> let's, let's call it, I don't know what you, cause everyone's got different names for it. Time restricted feeding, intermittent, buzzer. I eat twice a day. I have breakfast around sort of what's commonly called lunchtime around 12 or one. Cause I like to do everything in the morning. It just, that's, you know, that works for me. And I know People will come up with a study, or it's better to do early feeding. This is what you know works for me um, with with how my, and it would just generally be um, steak. I'll I'll grind my own mince, uh, my own uh, ground beef. I'll uh, make burgers. It would be burgers, steak, with eggs, maybe with some bacon. It just depends on what I've got, which I've normally got a lot. You know how I feel, but I find that. I need to eat, the first meal needs to be quite substantial. Otherwise I'll start feeling a little bit hungry you know, in, the, you know, in the afternoon. So if I can have a really big, um, let's call it breakfast, um, that's, that work works for me. And then I'll eat six or seven. And normally, pretty much it's, it's just the same as what I had for breakfast. But maybe, maybe, not, maybe not as much. It just, it, it, you know, it, 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 just, it just depends um yeah because i can i can eat it all i can eat it you know all you know all, you know, all the time and and that pretty much that pretty much is is it you know i'll scramble the eggs i'll fry some eggs i'll poach some eggs i'll have some wild salmon um I, you know i like wild salmon uh, i won't eat the normal normal type salmon i'll eat some chicken now and then you know i can eat three times the amount of chicken i can with with beef mm. but sometimes it's just it's just I make really nice chicken. It's you know some it's crunchy with the, with the fat, and, um, but yeah. It's, so it's 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 basically steak and eggs times two. Yeah, nice. That's and, you it. Said, <laughs> and, um, and and you said you eat uh, or sorry you eat later in the day because you're you're doing your workouts in the morning. Is that right? Yeah, I like to, and I've I've done this for you know for you know for you know for you know for a lot you know for a long time. You know, I was, when I used to eat breakfast, I never, even what, to, to, to a degree, even what I was eating, um, I never felt that great if I had to, if I had to do something, you know, like fairly sort of like physical and like living in Switzerland as a ski instructor. And, you know, going back on sort of like, you know, you know, this is a long time ago when I used to eat oatmeal and, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd made flapjacks the night before. 
and I'd eat the whole. I'd eat one. I eat the, eat the whole tray because oh, you're going to burn it off in the morning. Yeah. But in the morning, you know, you have oatmeal and I put some peanut butter and then you know, you know, so some honey or some, and then it tastes great. You know, it tastes it tastes fantastic with some bananas and and some cream. You know, it's amazing. So I'd have that in the morning. The time I would leave to to get to work to get to the resort, I'd have to stop into a cafe to have some some mint tea just to just to settle like like the stomach or something like. So. After a while, I just started, you know, not eating, and so intuitively went into not having anything, and and that's pretty much how you know I lived, you know, a large proportion, of, you know, my my skiing life was not having any breakfast, and I could ski with clients high level all day long and not eat, not not eat anything, and then so once I started making that, uh, you know, the cutting out more of the, the the grains, more of the, the you know the carbs. You know, you know, I felt you know, even, you know, even better. And you know, people say, "Well, don't you need all that energy to to keep warm?" You, well, 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 no, no, you don't. I mean, it's you know, I, you know, I, you know, I didn't. Um, and and that for me, just you know, my head felt clear. I felt strong, and it's so so. Yes, yeah, so I just feel really, really good not eating. First thing, first, let's call it first thing in the morning. Sometimes I wake up. Sometimes I, you know, very, very rarely I wake up and I think, oh, I'm actually hungry. So sometimes I, you know, I do, you know, I do that. But generally I don't. And then I'll train, do what, what other stuff I've got to do, and then eat 12, one o'clock. Sometimes it's a bit later, and it just, yeah, it, that's what works for me. Yeah, I, I certainly noticed that. Like I feel much better training fasted and just just doing my normal work day fast that I just feel yeah. better and have a lot more energy when you when you have your sort of midday meal uh your breakfast um is it you, you say you eat a lot so do you do you get a bit sort of lethargic afterwards like I know that if I if I fill up during the day like I'm, I'm just dragging the rest of the day at work I think uh, you know that's that's a good question because I think you know it's, it's like this like that fine line of mm. judging you know judging it Right. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I don't judge it. I eat too much. You know, I'm aware, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm aware of it. And I think sometimes you can get caught up, especially sort of like, you know, being on social media and, 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 you know, you want to do things a little bit more with the big steak, I'll put that on it. And, and I don't want to leave it. So, 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 yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just sort of judging, judging it right. But yeah, if I eat too much, um, I can be like that, the lion that sort of, um, mm. falls asleep after, Yeah, which is not a bad sort of, you know, it's not a bad thing to, you know, to sort of like to look like, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Well, if you can do it and like, certainly like an afternoon nap, like I'll, I'll take a siesta any day that I can, but if I, have, if I'm able to, but yeah, it's just sometimes you're not, not able to in the day. Yeah. 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 So what, what's your training program now? Like you have, you have, um, you know, different videos and things like that where you just like, You've got a, a pretty awesome setup uh, there. I'm assuming that's that's your house, like your backyard, and um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you've got just a ton of different things, a tons of uh, of different weights, but also um, you bands, I think, from, from the look of it, and then also just sort of uh, a different sort of put together uh, sorts of sorts of weights and things like that to to get your own workout. So what, what's your routine now? So I just, I mean, I put everything together on the day. Mm -hmm. you know i mean i'll have i'll have you know, let's say uh a warm-up so i'll do i'll do some hanging i'll do some squat holds i'll do um a banded a little banded to batter um mm -hmm. as you know as you know as a you know as a, you know, as a warm-up and then really it just goes from you know what i fan really what i fancy sort of doing but you know over the week i know that i'm gonna pull something you know do a deadlift pull something heavy I'll do some form of, of, of squat and some form of pressing movement in with every, you know, as, as, as you know, as, you know, as a mix. And, you know, I'm, you know, I've, I carry a lot of like old you know, injuries um, through martial arts training, through, <laughs> through crashing when I'm skiing, um, you know, I've broken my back, I've had surgery, I've you know, broken pretty much every part, you know, every, you know, every part, part of me. 
So my training is just about how I can maintain and still build strength, maintain and still build muscle, be as agile and as mobile and, and let's say as powerful as I can be um, without trying to batter myself or trying to sort of batter myself and all my PR, I've beaten my PR and I've beaten this today. It's just about sort of uh, moving and, and, and keeping strong and developing more of a, an internal type of strength um, rather than just doing stuff for, for numbers you know, and, and, and getting injured because it becomes competitive with, with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just about, just about move, but underlining it and topping it is about doing everything with, with, with good movement, with good form. Um, and that for me is, is, you know, is, is, the, is the most important thing. And, and, you know, with that, you'll get that intensity and it's that intensity that, that creates that, that adaptation. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the type of, so it's not a program. It's just what I decide to do, you know, you know, on, you know, on, you know, on, you know, on the day. And I like, I like playing, I like playing with stuff. Um, and it's all to do with my background in martial arts, my background in, in, in Qigong, you know, the emphasis on being on having on being strong in the legs, in the core, the skiing, you know, all you know, that the ability to be uh, resilient, you know, it, you know, as you know, as a contact, you know, it's, it's doing in con sport, the more resilient you are, because you, you've got stronger muscle. Um, if you take a hit, you know, so if I get thrown. Um, I, I do have a crash skiing, which happens. I can just walk away, you know, from it, un, you know, un, you know, unscathed-ish. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. And are you training every day now, or do you have like a split, or do you take days off, or anything like that? No, I, you know, I, you know, and this is a question that people, you know, you know, ask a lot. I mean, I train, you know, I train every, I move every day. Mm-hmm. And I'll always do some band work every day. I'll always do some hanging or some squat holds, you know, every day, just for you know, my, just for my, you know, mo- you know, mobility. And you know, the way that uh, that I look at it is that if I had a physical job, if I was a farmer, and I'd be, I, I, I'd, lo- I actually quite, I'd love to be a farmer. Mm-hmm. But if I was a farmer, there aren't any days off. Yeah, you'll be doing stuff every single day. You don't know what you're going to do every day. You may have a plan what you need to move, but if there's a problem with with a sheet that you have to carry or, or a, a calf, or you're having to lift heavy stuff, you know the tractor breaks down. You know all this sort of stuff. You're working every day, so I like to do stuff. You know, you know every day. There's, there's no plan to do every stuff every day, but I I just feel better even if it's just even if i just have a heavy heavy um something heavy to pick up i just do it once yeah i just do it once just just so the body doesn't forget what you know what i'm doing so yeah that's that's really my my way of doing stuff yeah well i you know and i i've always felt better if I, if I had something, whether or not I'm, I'm doing some big crazy workout in the gym or something like that, if I'm doing something just physically active and strenuous to a certain degree, I just feel better in general. And, uh, and I think you're right, you know, because you look back historically, people were always doing something. They were always moving. They were always, you know, doing something, uh, uh, you know, physical. Um, and, and then it, even, you know, before that, you know, prehistoric days, People were definitely doing things you know, physically, you know, because you you were just out, you know, you know, messing around with lions and trying to hunt and kill, you know, animals that were much bigger than you. So you had you had a lot of things to do physically, and so we we are designed for that. And you know whether you know you, you have you know some perfect physiological balance on this is exactly how you get the most out of every workout and get the most muscle growth. You know who knows, but you know we are certainly capable and able to do a lot of physical activity every day. I think, I don't think there's any doubt of that. And, and especially when you're, when you're feeding yourself properly and giving yourself appropriate nutrition. And so, yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, on, on, that, and, you know, another question that I get, um, a similar question is like, 
you know, do you take rest days? And, and my answer to that is that, well, no, I sleep well. Right. You know, and if, yeah. you, if you eat well and you sleep well, that is, that's, that's the recovery. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you mean by rest day where I just sort of don't do anything? Um, I'm always having to do something. I, you know, I've got a dog that needs to be yeah. to be taken care of. Um, he he wants his he wants his walk and play, and and, and he's a big dog. He's bigger than me. Um, <laughs> so so and sleep is such a fundamental you know, you know a fundamental part of 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 you know of recovery. So eating well, you're going to sleep better. And if you sleep well, then you can just get up the next day ready to to deal with whatever happens yeah absolutely and um so you've been i think you, you're starting the retreats i know you guys have like a, a uk meetup which is great you know uk is uh you know it's obviously a big um country but it's also small enough in the sense that you can you can probably do national meetups a bit more readily um yeah. what are you are you trying to grow the, the carnivore movement and you know uh, in the UK, or what, what's your what's your plans for that uh, side of things? Well, not that I mean, not that there's. Um, I have a, let's say a specific you know you know plan. You know, building let's say like the community. The, you know, the community is going is 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 it's growing. Um, we've got a the next big meetup is is actually is actually when I'm away on. Uh, I think it's next 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 Saturday or the week. The, you know the the week the week the week, the week after. Um, I think in you know I think in the UK, and uh, I would say the same like with 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 Europe, it's going to take a little bit longer for people to, let's say, get on board, because, and this is how I you know how I, I sort of uh, look at it, is that you know in you know in the US, you've got people who've been really who are quite vocal. You know, and we all know the one—the ones who scream and shout when, 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 when they're doing a video or they're, they're yeah. yeah. And I think that 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 to a degree sort of like does sort of engage people. And, oh, I'm going to try that. You know, whether it's the Liver King or whether it's you know, you know, you know. Whereas I think in the UK we're a little bit more, we're a little bit more, you know, subtle. So I think the growth would take a little bit, let's say, more of a steady type. Of, but I think now that um, doctors in the UK, you know, are, you know, are getting on board. There's a new um, um, charity, Public Health Collaboration, of, of doctors who are trying to sort of um, get their patients to go, uh, promoting more of a, a low carb way of fixing things. And I think as this type, st this um, type of stuff gets traction, that's what's going to draw in people because people. They don't want, you know, me screaming and shouting, you know, eat your steak, you know, you'd be big and strong and you, you're going to cure diabetes, you're going to be, you know, the biggest alpha prime or whatever. Mm -hmm. They want to hear it from someone like you mm -hmm. saying like, you know, this isn't good for you. This is good for you. This is the evidence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, so it's going to grow, um, you know, in that way. I mean, hopefully I can sort of like, you know, have something to do with that by people saying, well, you know, here's this guy, this is what he eats. He doesn't eat that. He does this, you know, he's almost 60, um, et cetera, et cetera. He's got, you, you, you know, so in a small way, if I can do, you know, if I can do something, you know, as part of that, but it, it's going to, it's going to come from the people who, who can, who can, who can assure people, this is the evidence. I can I can bring up a study. I can give you a study. I can give you some data. But Mike, you're not a doctor. But Mike, you're not. You don't have a PhD. But Mike, blah blah blah. Yeah, but there's the fucking evidence. It's, it's there. <laughs> they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. But you know, you know, the people that I'm going to attract, the people who actually sort of like perhaps don't want that, and just say, okay, well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try what he's doing. Yeah. And that's how I try to promote myself. It's like, you know, this is what I do. This is what works for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you. There's a good chance that it will. Mm -hmm. But this is this is what I do. Um, I've got nothing really to 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 prove. So so yeah, so it's so it's growing, it's 
it's good that it, we are small because we can do it's very easy to do like a little mini meetup we can do a bigger meetup and and so yeah so it's gonna it, it will start to grow i think over the next year or so i think there's going to be you know quite a big explosion hopefully yeah. i mean it's going to be you know it, people, have had, people have had enough of being people have had enough of, of, of feeling shit people have had enough of of not being like well what you know what do i do i'm being told to do this i'm being told to do that the the government is telling me to eat you know 10 portions of this and 10 portions of that you know but i'm still sick you know still sick i don't want to i don't want to go on statins i don't want to have more medication i want yeah. to be a thriving human being yeah yeah you know and yeah, I think I think people are, are exactly getting tired of just you have more problems, you just have more pills. You know, I people people by and large don't like taking pills. And you know, they come in and and you, know, you just have this problem, it's like, oh, okay, well, here, here's a pill for it. And then some people are like, Jesus God, not another pill. And they just want they want to be fixed. They don't want to have just some pill to like mask over the top of it. Maybe that was fine for a time when we thought that, oh, this was just this magic cure and this was, and this would just, you know, help you live your life and do what, but it's, it's, it's gotten to the point of absurdity where, you know, I see patients in the hospital and, you know, we, we see them and we, and we get a list of their medications and they're like on 16 medications. And, you know, that that's just crazy, you know, that uh, the people are on all of these things. And especially when, you know, when, when no one sort of looked at it, it was like, okay, why is this? Why, why, why is the prevalence of these things increased so dramatically? What's underlying here? What have we changed in our environment to precipitate these dramatic changes? Or is it that people have always had these problems and we've just never had a pill for them? Uh, I'm not in that camp. I think that that's garbage, you know, because, uh, you know, we, we, we have kept very close track of the disease rates in america since the 1800s like like seriously like we, we've I, and I'm, I'm sure the uk is very similar maybe even longer in the uk you know it's um it's been we had very very close records on these things and certainly in the last hundred years we have very 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 good data on these things and it's very clear that these these diseases have some of them come out of nowhere heart disease is really a disease of the 20th century that that really wasn't around in any real numbers before that that we we knew of and and now it's just it's the number one killer on earth and it has been for 60 years you know at well in the western world anyway so i just don't i just don't buy that and it's getting worse why is that you know it was the number one killer when we started keeping track of this sort of in the you know, 60s and 70s and it's tripled since then so obviously what we're doing is not helping you know, I mean, I, I, and I think we're sitting on, you know, a huge time bomb. Yeah. You know, you know, when I go, um, when I pass the school and I see the kids coming out and again, this is not being anti-fat or, you know, people can do whatever they want. But when I was at school, you know, in all the years, there was, there was generally like one fat person mm -hmm. it, through, you know, through, you know, through, you know, throughout, you know, we did things like, you know, what kids do. We, took, we, we made fun, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, that's, we, you, that's what people did. What we did back then. Perhaps it's changed now. <laughs> um, but there was one fat kid in the year. Mm -hmm. That was it. Now, you know, you know, I go past the school, you know, and, it's, and I'm, I'm just shocked because it's like, it's like finding the, the, the one who isn't. Yeah. Or you know, overweight and, you know, you, you go to the supermarkets and you just think, Jesus Christ, you know, at what point is that going to get, what point is that going to change? And, you, you know, I look at people in their uh, teens and, you know, in their twenties and their thirties, you know, and it, it's like they're all carrying excess weight. They're all looking, um, they're not looking healthy. I mean, that's whether they've got weight or, you know, or, or not, they, they don't look the way that they stand, there's there's no body structure. And you think, well, this is it's not a one off. It's only going to it's this is only going to get you know you, you know worse. And then when you do have something like another 
another uh, what's the, I'm not even going to mention the word, but another you know another sort of pandemic or you know that comes and then it's these people who you know who aren't going you know who aren't going to make it you know, yeah. physically you know, or you know or you know you know or you know or, or mentally um, and so yeah I think we're just sitting on a on a huge time bomb yeah I know I, I totally agree and it's um, you have you have to sort of wonder like. Yeah, because there's so many recommendations about doing basically the opposite of what we've seen gives, you know, a, a great benefit to life and to, and to health. And, and we're trying to, you know, normalize being sick and normalize being, uh, you know, unhealthy. And I don't, I don't think that we should do that. I don't think that's, that's good for people to do that. I, I don't, I don't think you need to make people feel bad about things and, and and be horrible to them just because they're unhealthy. But at the same time, you shouldn't just say, no, no, that, that's really good. It's good that you're doing things, that you're smoking and drinking and eating cupcakes. That That's actually, that's, you know, that that's a good thing. It's like, it's not a good thing. I'm sorry, but it's not. And it, it's objectively bad, you know? I mean, a good thing morally, ethically. I mean, that's a different story, but we were talking about just health for health ramifications that has objectively poor outcomes when you do that. And so if you want to do that, then that's your business, but you shouldn't, shouldn't be fooled into thinking that it's, that it's not going to come without a cost. Yeah. And just getting back to one of the, there's a, a post office in a, a shop that's opposite a school. So sometimes I go into this post office to do some, some, some posting. And of course, like shop outside of school, so it's you know it's full of crisps and chocolate, and it's it's a it's a new what we call in the UK news agent. So it's got all that. But now they've got, um, and it was put in in the, in the summer just before the term start. It's another it's a machine at the back, and it's a <laughs> and it's like a big um, banner on the top, plant based. And it's a milkshake machine that you could get Oreos, Oreos, uh, Snickers, all all these things because it's 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 a, but they're selling it because it's plant based. Oh my god! And that to I mean that I mean that to me is just you know it's like they're saying yeah you can eat this shit <laughs> because it's plant based mm -hmm. and and people will and to me that's I mean to to me that is. Is is that's that to me is criminal. Yeah, well, that is hey, that's that's a, that's being a drug dealer. That's, it is that's, that's who you are. It is, you know, and I mean they should they should have a cigarette dispenser next to that same plant based as well, you know. I mean they're it's all plant based and you all, all that's it. yeah you know, and uh, or you know and like a, and like a you know you know beer dispenser as well, and and that's the thing. I mean I, I think this is this really is drug. I was actually just thinking about this. This is this is like the you know the you know, the opium uh, trade, uh, like it was back in the day, people were getting fabulously wealthy, pushing things that are just destroying people's lives. And sugar is addictive. That, that, is, that is a medical and biochemical fact, down to the, the strictest medical definition of what is a drug, like an addictive, you know, um, uh, uh, substance, an illicit drug. Sugar meets all the categories, you know, this, this hits a Dopamine response to the addiction centers of your brain, just like cocaine, heroin, and meth, and it kills the same areas of your brain as cocaine, heroin, and meth, and it just and it damages the body in the same way as alcohol. People don't like hearing that, but it's a fact. You know that that is a biochemical fact that has been shown biochemically uh, at the UCSF biochemistry department that fructose is broken down into the same components as alcohol. And it causes the same damage as those breakdown, as those same components do from alcohol. You get fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, diabetes, heart disease, and it's now implicated in cancer and Alzheimer's. So this is a drug by the strictest definition. It damages your brain to the same extent as meth, and it damages your body to the same extent as alcohol. Why in God's name are we allowing children to have this? I mean, like, you know, if, if cigarettes and and alcohol are age restricted. Why isn't sugar? Oh, because it's nummy and kids like it. Yeah, they like cigarettes and alcohol too. Probably, well, yeah, eventually they like alcohol. But like, you know, there there are little kids in Indonesia that like were smoking cigarettes and like this is one kid. He's like three years old. He smokes three packs a day. He's he's, he's gone all over the internet 
uh, because of that. It's like, well, you know, he likes it and he gets really upset when, when we don't give it to him. So I guess we're just going to keep giving him cigarettes. It's like, well, of course he, he wants him. He's going to throw a tantrum. It's a drug. He's addicted just like kids do uh, when they don't get their sugar fix. You know, if you give them cocaine, they'd probably like that too. You know I mean? It's a drug. You don't give drugs to kids. And people think that, that a drug is only as bad as the high it gives you. For some reason, people think that. I think heroin is just this horrible, horrible thing. Well, actually, the, the, the chemical heroin, the opiates, we use, we use opiates in people with chronic pain for decades. It doesn't actually cause physical harm to their body. It's addictive, and you can, you can damage yourself chasing that addiction and use dirty needles and prostitute yourself and, and live in un, uh, unsavory conditions and, and you know, commit crimes to f- chase that that addiction, but the, the chemical itself, if not, you know, off the street with a whole bunch of nasty stuff in it with it, but like just opiates don't actually cause physical damage to your body. Alcohol does sugar does. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why, why are we separating these things and, and saying that one is okay and the other isn't, you know, I think that if you're going to do this rationally, you need to, you need to hold the same, standards to all of these things. And I'm not, I'm not even a person that, that thinks that necessarily drugs should be illegal. I think there's, that's a, that's a debate that we can have. I just think that there are certain things that cer- that certainly should be age restricted. And we have kids with developing brains and, and bodies that you shouldn't, you know, you should restrict things that are going to cause serious permanent harm and, uh, and disrupt their development. I think that's a no brainer. Well we, well, we live in a world that, you know, there's instant gratification for, you know, for everything. You know, you know when I was a kid, it, it was, you know, I started martial arts in, in 1973 because the film Enter the Dragon and a famous yeah. a series called Kung Fu with David Carradine came out. It was on a Friday night and you had to wait a week to watch it again. You couldn't download the whole, the whole thing. Mm. When we had treats at home, it was, you know, once a week. I remember sort of my mother bringing out, you know, it, it sounds sort of like <laughs> just bringing out sort of like, you know, these after eight mints on a Friday night. So you'd wait a week. I didn't really like them, but but it was like you waited, you waited a week. Um, but now we don't. Now we don't. Now we don't do that. So kids have the treats. They're not treats anymore. There's, you know, kids don't have anything to look forward to because they're having it when they want. Um, so they're having you know, all the, you know, all the the chocolate bars in you know, every day. It, so, and that to me is 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 you know is is is, is such uh, you know a big issue because people want everything now. They don't want to. They don't want to work for anything. If I said to someone, look, you know, if you want to get strong and fit, blah, 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 it's going to take you to get to this, it's going to take two years. They don't want to know. They don't want to, well, what can I do? Can I do something in a day? You know, courses, you know, if you want to get educated in whatever it is, you can do a day or two day course and you can get a certification. And it's like, you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm this now. You, 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 people are like, well, hold on, it, it should take, takes, years people don't, people don't want you know people don't want that here they want that instant gratification kids want that instant gratification um their kids are just so drawn into you know you know you watch kids coming out of school they're all like this yeah but, you know that's it they don't they have they, there's no awareness the you know everyone's wearing earphones looking at the phone they're crossing the roads they don't look at cars they don't look at there's no awareness to, there's no awareness to, to, to the outside world. And there's the only awareness is, is to that. So yeah. there's no awareness to the outside world. There's no awareness to their body. Um, how, how, how do you feel? Um, but they don't know. Because yeah. they're so, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And, I, and it's getting worse. You know, I mean, I, I mean Mark Twain talked about it. In the, in the late 1800s, how, you know, how all, all these things are commercialized and we're being convinced that, you know, we need all these things that, that, uh, that we have to have these things that didn't exist 10 years ago and that, we, that don't mean anything, bring nothing to our lives. And you, you would think that he was describing modern day, but he was talking about 
the late 1800s. Yeah. And yeah. oh my yeah. God. And, we, and we're talking about our grandparents and how things were just such, so, so much better back then. And that would have been, you know, far and away past that. It would have been their grandparents that would have been in Mark Twain's time looking at this going like, this is crazy. So we have gone yeah. so far beyond the pale. And I mean, it, it's, you, you hope that we haven't gone past a point of no return, but like you say, I mean, we have an entire generation of people, a couple of generations deep now that are just stuck to their phones all the time and, and have been raised like that. And, you know, I mean, there are studies um, going back, you know, to the nineties, looking at uh, screen time and, and just watching TV for kids. And they, they just, you know, concluded that, you know, kids really shouldn't watch television before they're two at least that it actually really impacts neural development and so for at least the first two years they should never look at a screen honestly i think that it would be it'd be better if they just didn't like maybe till they were 15 out of the house they can buy their own damn phone or something like that but you know but but at least when their their brain is developing those early years and you see the difference in kids that are raised in front of screens and that, or the ones that don't have it. And so the parents are forced to interact with them and play games with them and do puzzles with them and read to them. Those kids develop so much more. They get have such a big advantage and, and they're, you know, able to, you know, later on in life, play video games and do these things, but they're not beholden to them necessarily. And they've, they've gotten so much more out of that, uh, that early interaction with adults, which is what we all, everyone used to get, that was always the way because, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have historically didn't have TVs and things like that. You had to read books. You had to, you know, do puzzles and do games. There was, there was something I read. It was like all like the major executives for most of the social media companies, um, you know, asking is like, you know, do your kids have your platform, you know, like, you know, Twitter, Facebook, you know, whatever it was. And, and the answer was a resounding, no, my kids don't have a smartphone. And, you know, instead of getting video games and getting tablets and doing all, all the little gadgets, all these people in tech, they didn't, they got these, you know, you know, uh, exquisitely made, you know, wooden toys from, you know, from Switzerland and like, that's what these kids played with. And they were puzzles. They're things that grew their brain and actually were, you know, used uh, tactically as opposed to just sitting on a screen all the time and just, and just numbing their brain. We used to call the, the television, you know, the boob tube or the idiot box, you know, and now our lives are that we, we constantly have an idiot box in front of us all the time. I, I'm, I'm guilty of this too. I, and I, and I hate it. And I really do. I wish I, I could just, to delete all social media, but unfortunately, you know, trying to get, you know, the podcast and these things out there, it's like, this is just what we have to do. These are the mediums that we have. And unfortunately I find myself on these stupid things way more than I want to be. And it just takes so many uh, more hours. And I think I want, because I'm always thinking like, oh, there's something on there. I should be doing, I should be doing, I should be doing. And there generally isn't. And, or if it is, it's not, it's not all that big of a deal. And it's, and it's distracting me from doing other actual worthwhile things that at the end of the day, I go like, Jesus Christ, I didn't even do that. I wanted to read this book all day. And I get to the end of the day and I, I haven't even opened the damn thing, like germ it, you know? And, and I find myself doing that too, even though I'm like fighting against it. Yeah. I mean, I, I would just, you get drawn into sort of like living a life where you think, oh, I need to have, this. I mean, and, you know, when I'm with a dog, it's like, okay, I'll leave the phone in, in, in the car. And it's just like, oh, but what if, you know, yeah. as I said before, you know, I've, I've got elderly parents, mum's 94, dad's 90. I'm waiting. It's, I'm sort of like waiting for the call because I've had it so many times. Dad's in hospital. We think this could be the moment. And so I live my life just like, well, I better have it just in case, even though I can get back home in it. But I'd like just to leave the phone in the in the in the car, um, you know, and just not have like the hour. And, and I like to take pictures, so oh yeah, well I'll take a nice picture. But, you know, we get drawn, we get drawn into that. But yeah. with just with the kids, and because you, you know you you know you mentioned uh, Switzerland, you know, because I used to, you used to live there, and you know you know I've taught. I've taught hundreds of kids. Um, you know, that's 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 what that's what you end up doing. 
but taught hundreds of kids, you know, you know, you know skiing, you know, in groups and, and privately. And you'll get some kids who are just super, super, not just super, super clever, you know, the ones who are four and five and six, they're already speaking three, four languages mm. uh, because they're living in a foreign country. Their dad's from one country, the mother's from another country. They're learning English. And I'd be on the lift with these, like, these kids and you're having a conversation. And I'm judging my, I'm, I'm sort of judging my intelligence with a seven-year-old. I'm just thinking, like, how do you know that? Yeah. How do you? And it's like, I think, I'm thinking, I'm really, I'm really must be really, really thick. And then, you know, you talk to the parents and they, some of the parents say, yeah, they don't have the internet. You know, they read and blah, blah, exactly, yeah. you know, what, you know, what, you know, what, what you say. And I'm just like blown, you know, blown, you know, blown away. I, I remember having one kid. She was three, um, and she spoke. Father was Dutch. I was about father was Dutch. A mother was Hungarian, so she spoke Dutch, Hungarian, French, and English. And and she and she said, "My," and she used to be saying, saying to me, "Oh, my English isn't so good." And there was me living 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 in Switzerland. And my French is probably worse now than it was was when I was you know you know eight, um, and my friend, I was always teaching in 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 in, in English, uh, and all my clients were English, English English speaking, and I'm just like looking at myself and I'm being like really really small because I can't even, yeah, yeah. And, and and you get her yeah, no internet no we just play with her, does yeah yeah it's, it's amazing it's amazing when you see kids. Um, who are just, I suppose, what you call it, raised naturally. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and that's how people yeah. used to be raised. And they were just, yeah. you know, they were just taught these things. People just knew these things. And now, you know, we have, you know, the you know, video games and, and social media raising them, which is terrible. And, and that, and we have, you know, those whole other subjects of, you know, kids being depressed and not having, you know, a direction to go in. Well, we used to, we used to, you know, it used to be that you didn't just, oh, let a kid be a kid and it's so magical and wonderful. No, it's not. Like, kids need direction. You know, a, a child is hardwired to look at their parents and say, okay, how do I survive as an adult? Because I'm going to be an adult yeah. and I need to survive. Like, mammals are hardwired for that. You know, baby cheetahs, yeah, they'll play and they'll romp, they'll do all that stuff. When mom starts hunting, they're like studying it and they're like, like mimicking what she's doing and everything like that because it's it's so important like you will die if you don't get these skills and so these kids you know are hardwired to do that and hardwired to pull in um these uh you know the, these skills and we're not taking advantage of that well a lot of people aren't taking advantage of that it sounded like those parents were taking advantage of that and instead of of teaching them skills that will benefit them as adults and help them be successful in life. They're just saying like, oh, well, just, you know, just go play video games. And now all of that attention is now going to video games. Now they're obsessed with, with video games or television or social media and they're depressed and they're unhappy and they don't have social skills. And they, you know, and there's all these problems that, you know, come about from just like an existential crisis. I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to be like? Well, all these sorts of things. Well, if they're, if you help children grow into adults from the beginning, they're not going to have that problem to begin with. They're going to be very, very directed. I mean, look, look at any kid who's, you know, who, whose parents are like farmers or something like that. And they grow up on the farm. Like, yeah, this is just what I'm doing. Yeah. I just do this. This is what I'm going to do. They, they have, they have a lot of direction in their life. They have a lot of, um, you know, uh, self-satisfaction and fulfillment because they, they, they know exactly what they're going to do with their life and they're, and they're working towards it. You know, and I, that's, that's something that's so simple to think about, but it's something that a lot of people are missing. We're now, we're now sort of, you know, parents are so worried about their kids doing anything or don't do that. You may hurt yourself or don't do that. So kids don't do anything because they may hurt themselves. Well, guess the farmer, he said, the, the dad would just say, go and pick that up. Yeah. He hasn't told the kid, oh, you've got to do this in a certain way. You know, just pick it up, bring it over here. Whereas now, oh, don't do that because you may cut yourself. You may, you know, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, we aren't learning how to be 
or grow, be human beings. It's simple, you know, it's 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 as simple it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's slightly slightly different, but I train with rusty weights because they, they're left outside, and I get messages of me, oh, yeah, I get I get lots of weird messages. Or oh, you're gonna, you know, you're you're gonna uh, have a tetanus and blah blah blah, and it, it's like. Yeah, I can imagine how you're bringing out your kids. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, and so you know, and and um, you people aren't being allowed. They're allowing kids to fail anymore. They're trying to protect them from that. You know, like people learn from mistakes. You know, so everyone's everyone, every successful entrepreneur, everything like that. You know, it's just like you know, said that, you know, it's just like, yeah, I had this one idea. I had 5,000 that didn't work. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the getting up and picking yourself off and dusting yourself off and, and going and doing it again. That's what makes you successful is just getting up and doing it again, getting up and doing it again. You know, when I was first started playing rugby, I had, you know, everything in my head, I was just like, I just wanted to be, you know, a, a great player. I want to just dominate people and just nail people. And, you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing a lot of the time. And sometimes all of a sudden just, someone blows me up and then I get up on the ground. I'm like, right, well, this is how that happened. I'm not going to let that happen again. And you learn and you do it. And and eventually, you know, I'm, I'm the one, you know, blowing people up and that was, that was great. And, you know, and someone, and if someone got something on me one time and be like, right, we're going to file that away and that's never happening again, or I'm going to use that against someone else next time. You know, that's how you learn. And you, people aren't allowing them to do that. And I was saying, go pick that up. Oh, they might cut themselves. Like, yeah, good. Then they'll be more careful next time. That's a good lesson. You know, you can tell someone a thousand times what happens to them. Oh, go, don't want that to happen. You know, you remember those things. And, and we're just, we're just not letting, we're not letting that happen. And we're getting, you know, people that aren't able to function as capably as adults as they could have. And I think that's a, that's a serious disservice uh, to, to, to our kids and our future, you know, generations. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to talk to you. Uh, I really hope we do it again. I'm just conscious we've been sort of sort of going here uh, on a tear for like 90 minutes now. Um, but it's it's uh, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak with me today. Um, where can we find you, and how can people uh, see your work and, and support you? Well, it's, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Um... I'm just on Instagram and it's, it's Mason's Mason survival. Mm -hmm. um, you can get in touch with me there, ask me questions about retreats and everything else that I, I do. Yeah. Mason survival. But yeah, it's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure. All right. Great. Well, I'll put that up in, in the show notes and uh, people can find you there. So great. All right, uh, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure and I uh, hope to do it again soon. Is it time for eating now? Yeah. Yes. This time. That's it. There you go. <laughs> awesome. See you Great. soon. Now. Thank you.